my name's Emma Reynolds and I'm the author and illustrator of Amara and the Bats. It's all about a little girl called Amara who loves bats and she's really upset when they move to a new town because the bats are no longer living there because they're losing their habitat. So inspired by real life youth activists like Dora McAnulty, Takata Iron Eyes and Greta Thunberg, she rallies her friends and her community to save the bats. So today I'm going to read you some of my book and then we're going to draw a bat together. Amara and the Bats by Emma Reynolds. Amara really loves bats. When Amara was very small, a bat got trapped in the attic of her old house. Amara asked if she could hold the bat, but her mum and big brother Samir told her they should wait for the wildlife rescue team. They would know how to handle and look after the bat safely. When the wildlife rescue team arrived, they caught the bat carefully and held it very gently in a towel. Amara got to see the bat's fluffy face, beady eyes and delicate wings up close. Some people are afraid of bats, but Amara thought they were so cute. Part of her wished she could keep it as a pet, but Amara knew the bat would be happier out in the wild where it could fly around and be free. Ever since then, Amara has loved bats. Her favourite thing to do is to collect all the bat facts she can find and write them in her notebook. Mum, did you know that bats are nocturnal? That means they're awake at night. They hang upside down like this. And they're the only mammals that can fly. Squeak, squeak! Amara and her family were moving to a new town. She was supposed to be packing her room but she kept getting distracted by more bat facts. Squeak, squeak! Amara squeaked all around the house. Samir, did you know that bats have such a high-pitched squeak that we can't even hear them? They use echolocation to find their food in the dark. I can hear you, Samir laughed. Amara and her family often watched the bats flying near their old house. She knew that all kinds of bats lived all over the world. So no matter where they lived, she'd always be able to see them. After they moved, Amara couldn't wait to visit the park in her new neighbourhood to see the bats flying around at sundown. Did you know that most bats eat insects or fruit, but some eat fish, frogs and even flowers? They have really long tongues to reach the nectar. They are amazing pollinators. But when Amara and her family got to the park, there were no bats to be found. They asked the park ranger about the bats, but she hadn't seen any in a while. We used to have a few bats nearby years ago, the ranger said sadly, but it's just me working here now and more and more of the land is being sold to make room for buildings. Amara felt a sad feeling in her tummy on the way home. She couldn't stop thinking about the bats in their habitat. There was so much that needed fixing. She felt as if the weight of the whole world was crushing down on her. What could she do to help? Amara? Her mum knocked on the door gently. I unpacked the rest of your books. A new new nature magazine arrived. Oh, thanks mum, said Amara, still feeling glum. It will feel like home soon, I promise. Her mum placed the magazine and Amara's bat books on the bed and then gave her a hug. Amara opened her magazine and started to read. There was a story about young people organising beach cleanups to clear plastic from the oceans, and another story about a boy teaching people to connect with nature by writing a blog and fighting to protect endangered birds. She found lots of stories and videos online about kids taking action to help animals and the planet. Soon, Amara realised if they could make a difference, so could she. And she had an idea. And that's all I'm going to read from the book for now. But there's lots of facts in the back as well about how you can take action for bats. It's all about how to build your own bat house. There's lots more facts about bats, bat poop, echolocation. And you can find out more on my website. Okay, today we're going to draw a bat together. So grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen or pencil and we'll get started. So first, we need to draw a little ear, a bit like a lowercase n. Then, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. 
Then we're going to draw a line to connect them, which is a low arch like this. Next, we're going to draw a really big line, so don't worry if you need to do it in two parts, but we're going to do a big loop and connect it around the other side like this. So you probably guess what we're drawing. So now we're going to draw a really big arch out to this side. And then we're going to do three arches connecting down to the bottom. So one, two, three. And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Big arch and then connecting one, two, three. So there's our body and wings. So now we're going to draw two little eyes. So you can draw the eyes any style you like. You might want to do it with a oval with a dot or you might want to do sparkly anime eyes but I've gone for dot eyes. Next we're going to draw, let's make this a bit more round. Next we're going to draw a little mouth. So we're going to draw a little smile and then if you want it to be an open mouth you just add the letter U underneath and you can even give it a little tongue. I'm just going to colour in the mouth there too. Next, we can add accessories. And this can be whatever you like. You could have a scarf, you could have eyelashes, you could have eyebrows. I'm going to give a little hat. So I want this bat to be having a party. And I'm going to add a little scarf as well, keep him cosy. There we go, your very own cartoon bat. I hope you enjoyed learning about bats with me and Amara today. And I hope it inspires you to get out there, get out into nature, go on a bat walk, get involved with your local bat group or join Bat Conservation Trust and help our amazing bats.